Right, so I think we'll start away there. So look, first of all, thanks to everyone who's joined. Um, so look, this is just going to be kind of a, a brief presentation talking about this national genotyping program. So just giving a bit of detail on the program so people kind of understand before they, they sign up or for who have on, uh, signed up so they know exactly what's involved. Um, so, and so, um, as you probably know, look at uh, this national genotyping program was announced by the, the the minister there a few weeks back. So look, uh, in 2023, so year one of the program, so that's this year, there's bar funding available to genotype all the cows in calf heifers and the 2023 heifer calves. So the plan is that this year we'll get all the cows, heifers, uh, baby heifer calves, we'll get them all genotyped out this year. Uh, and then for the next four years, farmers will be committing to genotyping their calves at birth. Uh, and the calves then will be done under a cost sharing model. So this is split between farmers, industry and the government, a third each. Um, so it'll work out at roughly about six euros a calf for the farmer for the total cost. And the rest then will be paid by the Department of Industry. So this year, 2023, all the older animals and existing animals, they are free of charge. And from next spring, it's a four year commitment to do the calves every year and that'll be around six euros a calf will be a co the cost for the farmer. Applications for the programme are open till Friday, so the 14th of July. And look, the goal is to do about 600,000 cows plus their followers. So just the steps involved in the programme. So look, obviously step one is to sign up and apply for the programme. So this can only be done online through the ICBF website. So once you log into the ICBF website, regardless of whether it's a phone, a tablet, a computer, once you log into your ICBF account, the first thing you will see in the middle of the screen is National Genotyping Programme. Apply here and you can apply through there. You just need a couple of basic details, uh, direct debit details, um, and you'll be able to submit your application. So you apply for the programme online through ICBF. Please do it before Friday. Um, and then the plan is that herds are accepted into the programme. We'll get button tags out for all your cows, your placement heifers, and if you've any stock pull on the farm. Uh, so these will be all free of charge. So the tag, the whole lot will be paid for. The cost of the genotype is covered. It is all paid for through this, this bar funding this year. Uh, so we'll be looking to get tags out throughout uh, August and September. And look, at, it's really important that we get these back. So we've asked that they get returned within a month. Because look, the money that's available to do all these cows and heifers, etc., has to be spent this year. Uh, so we need to get all these samples through the lab and paid for before the end of the year. And obviously the lab can only process so many in a given week. So we need to get them back as soon as possible so we can get them all processed. Uh, so they're all done and dusted before the cows and stuff start calving next spring. So it's really important that farmers return them as soon as they can after they get them. Now, obviously they'll go out in stages. So we plan on getting them out across August and September. Obviously the tag can, companies will only be able to print so many every week. So people will start to get them gradually uh, throughout the course of, of the next month or two. So look, we ask that you return them as soon as you can. It's all paid for in terms of doing these cows, heifers and, and calves. And look, it's really important that we have them done so that when you go genotyping your calves next spring, your crop of calves, that we already have the older animals done. So we actually have to match up that calf to the correct dam and the sire, etc. We'll obviously only send samples for animals that haven't previously been genotyped. If they've, genot if they've been genotyped before, they're fine. So it's that non-genotyped in your herd, cows, heifers, uh, 2023 heifer calves, they'll all be done this autumn free of charge and just make sure to get the job done and get the samples back in. And then for, so that's this year, that's 2023 taken care of. And then for 2024 onwards, it's all about the calves and doing the calves at birth. So the plan would be this autumn, there'll be what's called double tissue tags available to order. So basically when you're ordering your calf tags for next year, if you're in this program, you'll be ordering double tissue tags. So whether you order over the phone or you order online from your tag company from kind of probably September time onwards, these will be the only tags available to you if you're in the program. So when you go in to order tags online, it'll be double tissue tags you'll be ordering. What is a double tissue tag? Basically, each year leaves a sample. So when you're tagging the calf next spring, one year will give you a BVD sample, same as always, and the other year will give you your DNA sample, which you'll send off to the, the genotyping lab. Um, for any farmers who are saying, Jesus, I have five or 10 tags left over from this year, regular national tags left over, you know, can I use them next year? Absolutely, but you will have to get an additional button tag to take the DNA sample. So you'll be able to use them tags 
tag those first couple of calves to use up those tags and you'll just be putting an additional button tag in the ear of that calf to get the DNA out of the calf. Uh, so in the autumn, when you're ordering your double tissue tags from your tag company, that if you need any button tags to use up old tags you have, to order them at that point as well to get them used up. So that's the first thing, you'll be ordering double tissue tags from this autumn. Uh, then paying for the genotyping. So look, we say the cost will be around six euros a calf. So I suppose we're giving, you know, we're assuming the farmer will pay a bit extra for his, his tags, his double tissue tags compared to regular tags. So we're saying it could be up, up to euros what we're giving for that. It probably won't cost that much at all. Uh, similar postage and envelopes. So obviously when you're tagging your calves next spring, you'll be posting away the DNA sample. So we attribute about a euro per calf in postage is what the farmer will be paying. Again, probably won't be this expensive because for most farmers, they'll be posting maybe eight or 10 samples together in one go. They're posting once or twice a, a week during the spring. And then it's a four euro genotyping charge. So that's actually what you'll be paying this autumn. So if you buy 100 calf tags this autumn, 100 double tissue tags, you'll pay 400 euros as your genotyping charge. And this will be done through direct debit this autumn. So you'll pay your four euros up front for each calf tag. So when the calves arrive next spring, you just keep sending away your DNA samples. They're already paid for ahead of that. Uh, so it'll cost around six euros a calf all in, but the farmer will actually pay four euros by direct debit for the genotype. And after that is just whatever the tag costs extra and obviously posting the samples to the, the genotyping lab. But you'll pay four euros this autumn by direct debit for your calves for 2024. Okay. And obviously then next spring, you will start tagging your calves at birth. So the reg registration process largely stays the same, whether your ag food, uh, whether you're using an app, so a farm software package, you will go in, you will register your calf, submit the registration, and then you'll send off your DNA sample as well. And in the background, the DNA will check to compare what you've recorded uh, as the registered sire and dam, and then that'll issue out the, the blue card. Uh, so obviously the farmer pays the postage as well, um, so that's why we have the euro put in for the post and envelopes. It's a, it won't cost that much per calf, really. Um, but that's the difference, really, I suppose, in terms of the process the farmer is following. He's tagging at birth, register pretty much the same as you always did, register your calf online, and then you're sending off this additional DNA sample. That's really the extra step in this process when it comes to calves. So you record the calf details, whether it is on ag food or through a farm software package, and send away your DNA sample, and the check gets done in the background the DNA results get compared to the what you've registered yourself. And if you put down uh, Dam A as the calf, so you're, maybe you're not sure and you've guessed and you put down Dam A, the DNA comes back as Dan B, the change you made in the background and the blue card comes out with Dan B on it. So you won't have to do any change yourself. It'll all be done in the background. So from 2024 onwards, you're genotyping your calves at birth. So you're buying double tissue tags. You're taking the additional sample at birth, sending it off, registering your calf the same way you always did. That's the way the the process will work. So this is just kind of showing, I suppose, an example of a timeline of what it, what it, what it looks like when you do it. Uh, so the DNA Ridge timeline, day one. So let's say on a Monday, your calf is born, you tag the calf, you put your details in to register it online, submit your registration, send away your DNA sample. Let's say on the Wednesday, the DNA sample arrives in the lab, goes through the lab, and probably by the end of the week, so we say they're around day seven, uh, the DNA is, co is confirmed, it checks the parentage, and a couple of days later, your blue card arrives on farm. So that's essentially what the timeline looks like. Uh, the average time in lab, so I suppose from a farmer's point of view, tag the calf, send away the sample and register your calf. Average time in lab this spring for samples was around three and a half days. So the turnaround is quite quick. So you'd be hopeful around three, four or five days, the DNA result is back and your blue card gets triggered and arrives in the post. So for most farmers, if you're, I suppose the big thing really is tagging the calves and sending away the samples regularly. You know, if you're a dairy farmer, you're compact calving in the spring, you've a lot of calves hitting the ground, we would generally say to post samples twice a week to keep the samples moving um, so that you're getting DNA results back. So you're getting blue cards issued and out in the post. That's the really important point really is in the spring, it's a slight change in routine taking the additional sample, but the key thing is just try and post them regularly so you keep getting your blue card blue cards back kind of a, on a regular basis and you're not waiting too long for blue cards. So that's essentially the process. Tag the calf, send away the sample, register them the same way you always did. And the DNA will get checked in the background, the blue card gets issued.
So just, I suppose, why would farmers do this or what's the benefits of participating in this program? So look, I suppose there's what we would say, there's kind of two sides to the benefits. You have the genetic side, so around the whole area of genetic improvement. So, you know, you get increased accuracy of parentage, making sure sires and dams are right, parentage verification. So look, we've done this on a pilot basis with a number of years. And what we're seeing on average is somewhere around 17, 15 to 17% parentage errors. So by doing this, uh, and getting the parentage, parentage checked at birth, it eradicates all those errors, which means in turn, the evaluations, your EBIs, your genomic EBIs, they're all a lot more accurate. And that really aid in this whole area of genetic gain, having these accurate evaluations, having the parentage right, means the evaluations for your animals are as accurate as they can be and are of greater reliability because all the animals are genotyped. So look, there's a whole area there around genetic improvement. So having, avoiding any errors, having the parentage right, having sire and dam verification. And I suppose another big benefit uh, for the industry and for our breeding programs is, is the identification of outliers. So, you know, a lot of farmers will be used to some of their bull calves every spring getting tested for AI. And I suppose through this and having more calves genotyped, we'll be able to pick out more of the outliers. So the calves that get the right mix of DNA at birth through the genotype, we're able to see this. They have high EBIs and they're the ones that can picked up, get picked up then for the national breeding program. So there's a whole area there around genetic improvements and genetic gain because of our more accurate figures that will be available. That's going to be a massive area of benefit. And the other areas around what we call non-genetic improvement. So other areas that we'll make gains by doing this. So I suppose around the surety or the accuracy of the animals. So there's a tool called the CBV, the commercial beef value. So we'll go through that in a little bit more detail shortly, but essentially having this CBV and having it accurate, having the parentage right on all these animals will mean there'll be more confidence around the animals being traded, both for people selling them, that they'll know what they're selling is exactly right. And for people buying these animals as well, whether it is dairy, beef, calves, dairy males, that they know what they are. Uh, so there's a labor saving side of it. So I suppose, and look at probably every farmer's had to do this at some point or, an, or, or other, where you make a mistake on a blue card and you have to go fill in an ER94B farm, ER94B farm, take it into your DVO, give that in, get a new blue card issued out. The hope by doing this at birth and having everything checked before the blue card comes out, that it would largely and entirely nearly eradicate the need for making changes or having mistakes in blue cards, having to fill out ER94Bs, that it's at birth, everything is right. The blue card is right. If you're going for pedigree start threaten, it's always right then. It's always accurate from day one. And look, there's a whole other side of it then around traceability and 100% DNA traceability, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, you've better marketing and all this type of thing that will be the, a world first to have this sort of traceability. So there's a whole area there as well that, that, that lends itself to this non-genetic improvement that we'll, we'll see. So just two areas I kind of wanted to focus on. So we've gone through some of the benefits, but there's one or two tools I'd, I'd like to kind of bring people's attention to. So the first one is a tool called GenoCells. So by participating in this program, getting all your cows and in-calf heifers, et cetera, genotyped this autumn, you will then be able to use this tool called GenoCells. So it'll be available through the milk recording organizations. And essentially what it involves is you take a sample from your bulk tank, send it off, and you're able to get a cell count back for every cow in your herd. So it's a tool that farmers will be able to use in conjunction with their milk recording, that if your milk record may be four or six times a year, you know, maybe every two months, that in the intervening time, if you have a spike in cell count or anything like that, rather than going through every cow and stripping them all out or CMTing a big batch of cows, that you can take a sample from the bulk tank, send it off and get a cell count for every cow in your herd. And this will only be possible if you have all your cows genotyped, which you will have through this program, because we'll have the DNA of every cow. When you take the sample from the bulk tank and send it away, we'll be able to see and calculate the cell count for every cow in your herd. So if you have problems cows, you'll very easily be able to find them uh, just through one sample from the bulk tank. So that's a really, really useful tool that will be coming online shortly. It'll be available through the milk recording organizations and anyone who's doing this program and has all, all their cows genotyped will be able to use this tool uh, and it would be very useful and a great labor saver rather than having to go through the, the, the process of trying to find cows who are causing problems or causing a spike. And the other tool I wanted to, to kind of highlight was a tool we call the CBV, so the commercial beef value. Um, so this will be available on all genotype calves, so kind of all dairy males, all dairy beef calves. And essentially what it's looking at 
is, I suppose, the beef quality or the beef merit of these calves in a slaughter context. Um, that when you take calves to the mart, that calves that are of good merit from a beef point of view, that will go up on the board in the form of a CBV, a commercial beef value for them. And I suppose for farmers then that are using DBI, selecting bulls of a good beef value, using a, a stock bull that's of a good beef value, that this will be highlighted in the mart. Farmers hopefully will get a, you know, the farmers buying the calves will have more confidence because they'll see this information on the mart board and they might be willing to bid a, bit, a little bit more on those better quality calves. So this table just kind of shows the value of it. So the top line, these are the best calves on the commercial beef value and the bottom are the poorest calves on the commercial beef value. And this is based on animals slaughtered in 2022. And this is specifically looking at dairy males, so the dairy bull calves. And what we see is there's very little difference in calf price currently when you look at the, the best and worst, but there's a huge difference when them calves go to slaughter. So for guys buying dairy bull calves, this will be a really useful tool because they'll want to identify these best calves that are, you know, are leaving them 300 euros more when they go to slaughter them. And they're also slaughtering them slightly younger. So they're going to save on, on feed around finishing and they're going to get a higher carcass value. So the CBV will be a great tool in that sense that even for dairy bull calves, farmers will seed the calves that are of better quality that will leave them more when they go to slaughter. So they'll be more willing to bid on them and it'll give them more confidence. So that's the, the CBV. It'll only be available on genotyped calves. So again, anyone who's participating in this program, genotyping the calves at birth, your calves will, will be able to have CBVs on the the mark board. This is just the, the same thing except for Angus males. So if we look at the Angus calves coming off the dairy herd that were slaughtered in 2022. And if we look at, again, the top are the best, the lowest are the poorest on CBV. And if we look at calf price, so the better quality calves, are the ones with the higher CBVs, were making about 58 euros more in calf price. So the farmer's getting 58 euro more um, when he sold his high CBV calf. And when you look at when those calves were finished in 2022, there was over 300 euros again of a difference between the best and the worst in terms of their carcass value. So again, by highlighting those calves that are of high CBV, that you'd hope that farmers would be more willing to pay a little bit more for them, because they'll be more confident they'll get it back because of the, the beef value of that animal. So again, by being in this program, having your calves genotyped, all your Angus and all your dairy beef calves will get the CBV value on the mark board, which hopefully will aid the value of the calves and buyers will have more confidence when it comes to buying them. And this will also be available um, on our ICBF website. So under view profiles and CBV, it'll be there. So anyone selling calves privately as well, will be able to look at this, see the CBV of their calves and people buying them, they can show them to them. And look, at it's just really important. Farmers are using them good quality, high DBI bulls that are of good beef value. Uh, and the other thing just to highlight maybe here as well is the better quality calves were being finished over a, a month younger. So there was 37 days in the difference between the best and the worst in age at slaughter. So, you know, and there was a publication there this morning around carbon emissions and reducing them and age at slaughter and slaughtering animals younger was one of the things highlighted. And again, CBV has a big role to play there. These high CBV calves, there is the potential to slaughter them at a younger age. So that's just another, another benefit of being in this program. You know, we've the, the genetic improvement, some of the non-genetic things that are available to farmers, and then you've tools like GenoCells and CBV. And look, at as they get used more and more, um, they'll only become more popular. So there, there, there's huge potential there. So just to finish some of the common questions we get, do DNA and BVD samples go to separate places? Yes, this is a really important point. So BVD samples go to your normal BVD lab that you've always used, while your DNA samples, you'll be posting them in specific return envelopes to a genotyping lab. So they will be going to a separate place. So that's an important thing to remember, because if, you're if you send the wrong samples to the wrong place, there's no guarantee you'll get them back or they'll get processed correctly. So when you're tagging your calf, you tag your calf, make sure your BVD sample goes to the, your normal BVD lab and the DNA sample will be going in a return envelope away to the genotyping lab. How do you tell the difference between the DNA and BVD samples for the calves? So look, it's a very simple rule. BVD is a white sample bottle. DNA is a pink sample bottle. So the white samples are your BVD. They go to your BVD lab. The pink samples will be going to your DNA lab. So it's just a very important point to remember. What I would say to most people, when you get your tags, get a piece of paper, write that on it, and throw it into your box of tags. So every time you're tagging calves, you see it there in front of you. 
How often should I post samples? So look, we would be saying that farmers need to be posting samples, DNA samples at least once a week. But during peak season, most dairy farmers will post them twice a week. And look, at the important thing to remember is the more often you post samples, the sooner you get a blue card back. So if you're conscious and you want to be getting your blue card back as early as possible, post samples as regularly as you can. So as I say, most farmers who would have done our pilot program would have posted twice a week during the peak of the season. You know, maybe a Monday and a Thursday, they would have posted samples twice a week. And look, it just means they're getting their blue cards back as quickly as possible. How long does it take to get my blue card? So look, this varies between about 10 and 18 days old. In 2022, the average was 13 days old. What I would say again, and back to my previous point, is a lot of this can be dictated by how regularly you post your samples. The more often you post them, the sooner you get your blue card, essentially. So look, they're kind of um, most of it for me. Uh, so just to summarize, it is a five-year commitment. Year one, you're doing your cows and heifers and 2023 heifer calves. They'll be done through button tags. If you get accepted into the program, they'll come out automatically Automatically to you. You just do the job. Um, a direct deb And then the next four years, obviously, is your calves. Uh, and then a direct debit is required when you're signing up to pay your four euros for your calves up front for the genotyping cost. Herd Plus membership is required. So you must be a member of Herd Plus and you must remain a member of Herd Plus for the duration of the program. OK, and look, just from our point of view, we'll finalize the list of herds as soon as we can. The deadline is Friday. So anyone who hasn't applied and wishes to, I would certainly say to do so, you know, after this meeting or as soon as you can. Once we finalize the list of herds, we'll get the button tags ordered and try and get them out as soon as we can. And look, please to try and re return them within a month as much as possible so we can get them through the lab, get them processed, get them paid for, and that all the animals are done. So when the calves arrive next spring, we're able to do a bit of matching up and we can match the calf to the cow. The double tissue tags for the calves, they'll be available this autumn, regardless of how you order your tags online, over the phone, they'll be available this autumn. And they're only available to herds who are in this national genotyping program. If you have any queries, we have a dedicated email address. So ngp at icbf.com, uh, or you can call us 023 882 -0452 and select option two for our plus. So look, to summarize, cows, heifers, and 2023 heifer calves will be done this autumn free of charge. And then from next spring, you're genotyping the calves at birth through double tissue tags. So you register your calf as normal. And the extra step is you're posting away the DNA sample to the genotyping lab. So look, that's pretty much all I have in the in the form of a presentation. There's probably some questions there. Um, so I think my colleague Mark is is available there. So look, we'll go through the questions. Uh, if you have them, just write them in the chat and, and we'll try and answer as many as we, we can here. Go through some of these. Um, so one question there is, why do we need to do the bull calves? So look, at as I've shown, Look, every calf needs to be done through the process. It's four euros a calf. Um, so every calf needs to be done. Um, you pay your four euros. You'll be paying that up front. So you'll have it paid for anyway. So you just send away the DNA sample. And look at it's both from the point of view of the breeding program and identifying these, these high genetic merit bulls potentially for AI, but also for CBVs, that all calves going through this program will be genotyped. So we'll get a, a CBV when they go to be sold. Um, for someone just in the SCEP program, so the suckler scheme, so look, we will have a specific webinar for, for beef farmers, for sucklers, but look at just briefly on the, on the SCEP. So essentially how the SCEP will work is if you join this program and if you need seven samples for your SCEP requirement, the first seven calves born next year will go into SCEP and it's only any calf beyond that that will be four euros. Um, another question there, I have a beef bull who's not genotyped. Will he be done? Yes, so we will genotype all the stock bulls in the herds. So any herds who have stock bulls, whether it's a, a beef bull, dairy bull, um, we'll try and pick him up and get him genotyped as well. So when the calves arrive next spring, we're we'll able to match up the, the, the calf to its sire. Um, so for calves born this autumn, will button tags for sampling be sent out or how does it work? So look for calves born this autumn. So look at for the 2023 genotyping, it'll be any calves that are born up until the point we order the tags for the genotyping. So if you calves born later, uh, you will have to genotype them your, yourselves and any calf then born from January 
will be done at birth through the double tissue tags or the additional button tag if you're using them up. Um, another question, uh, what about a calf that is born dead? So look, still born calves and all, we say to genotype all calves, you will have paid your four euro for every tag. So you may as well send away the, the DNA sample. Um, so, and look, you paid for the calf, but also, and it's something we probably learned through our, our pilot program, is unfortunately, if a farmer does make a mistake on a dead calf, so puts down dam A as the, the dam of dead, dead calf, and then that dam is predicted for a different calf, a live calf, it gets very, very difficult and messy, and you're trying to fix up then the dead calf, uh, dead calf's registration, so the right dam can be put in the live calf. So that's why we say genotype every calf, any calf that comes out of a cow, you paid the four euros on you, tagged the calf, send away the DNA sample, and it just means everything is verified at birth and it avoids any mistakes. You know, we don't want people to have to go to their DVO and fill in the R94B form or anything like that. So every calf that's born follows the same process as the approach. There. Uh, do, do. So, um, when do herds expect to be informed if they're in or not? So, look at um, a lot will depend on, on Friday and how we are numbers wise, but farmers will hopefully know very shortly. We'll be hoping the next week or two we'll be able to email and text herds that have been accepted into the program, and then straight after that we'll start looking at getting tags ordered and get them out on farm so we can start getting them back. Um, what about uh, calves? That... Oh yeah, oh. sorry, my mic wasn't working up to up to now. Hi, hi Gerard. Oh, um, Mark, you're on. Perfect. I might yeah. um, shout out the questions there and you might answer them so I just yeah. finish off. No problem, yeah. Uh, so what about calves that I buy in as replacement heifers every year? Yeah, so at the uh, for at the moment, um, if you do buy in um, any replacements after we've issued you your tags for your existing herd, you'll need to cover the cost of those yourselves. So that's similar to say calves born in the autumn time. We have funding. We'll be going out in one go to try get as you know all of the animals in your existing herd done. But that's it. Um, so if you do have calves born in the autumn or uh, heifer. Um, replacements bought in next year, you'll have to cover cover the cost of those yourselves as it stands at the moment. Now that's not to say maybe more funding will come along next year that we can cover those under, but we don't have anything lined up as of as of yet. Perfect. Um, another question there: Can I avail of Geno cells if I hair sample and genotype all my milking stock? So, um, Geno cells isn't actually available at as it stands as a service just yet. So the final details of what exactly would be need, required for the service or how the service um, is going to work is not fully um, decided yet. Um, but in theory, if all your cows are genotyped, if every single cow in your herd that's milking is genotyped, then you would you would be eligible to avail of the service as uh, it, you know that's how the technology works so it wouldn't matter if they were sampled by hair card yourself or through this program but you would need every single milk and cow to be to be done so that would probably come to a bit of a cost if you weren't to be part of this program absolutely um what about if you've two stock bulls running with the herd yeah so any any breeding bulls we have a couple of questions there about um about bulls young bulls will you get them done um or or not so any bulls that you're using for breeding yourself so that will be sires of calves in your own herd uh we we'll try and pick those up if we if we if we identify them we'll, we'll send you out samples for for them um young bulls that you have for sale for somebody else they may be breeding bulls insofar as their eventual use will be for breeding but they're, they're they're bred by yourself for sale for breeding for somebody else we won't be as as concerned about picking those up that's not the purpose of what we're trying to do with the pro with the with the program so again if you have a couple of stock bulls um and they're not um genotype we'll get samples out for those um and uh, then the, then the gene the genotype then of the calf should be able to identify which of the two bulls is um the correct sire at birth perfect uh, can you use hair samples for sampling the stock bulls 
Uh, look, we'll be we'll be ordering uh, tags, just one order of tags for everything in the herd. So we'll be trying to get guys to use the tags where at all possible. We don't want to be issuing tags and then wasting them. Um, but look, if there's a particular issue with, with a single animal in your herd and we're running into difficulty, give us a call and we'll see if there's, if there's anything to do. But look, the, the primary answer is we'll be trying to trying to go with the tags. They're more they're more reliable. Um, they're more reliable form of sampling. Perfect. Uh, a question here. Why do we prepay for tags or why do do we not do it the same as normal tags are paid for? So maybe just to go over the, the payment for the calves, for the genotyping again. Yeah, so the actual purchase of the tags themselves will be between you. Um, sorry, this is for this is for double tissue tags now for your calves from 2024. So the, the tags that you, the button tags you'll receive for your adult cows and heifers this year in the next couple of months, they're covered under the, the cost of the, you know, for free. Um, so you, you won't have to order those or pay for those. The double tissue tags that you're putting into your calves from birth from January, you'll pay for those tags with your tag supplier the same as you've always done. So that part of the actual purchasing of the tags will be between you and your tag supplier as per normal. Um, the, the genotyping part is being collected up front um, from a, um, an administration point of view. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of samples of, of upwards of a up to a possibly a million samples going through the spring in uh, going through the lab in the spring. And from a logistical point of view and a finance point of view, we have to be sure to that we have the pay, you know, the payment covered for those before they hit the lab. So it's sim much simpler to go once for each herd. And um, once we know how many tags they have and then and then it's all sorted for the spring um, rather than going, you know, on dribs and drabs as the calves are born. Perfect. Um, what do you what do you do if you don't know what calf is to what cow? Which cow is from which calf is from which cow? So um, the sample will will straighten out dam errors like so, provided we have your all your dam tags back and all your cows are sam have their valid samples in the database, we'll be able to um, straighten out any of those kind of dam mix ups. So what you would do in that case is record the dam to the calf to the best of your knowledge as you know as as confidently as you can but if you but in the knowledge that then if you have mixed those two calves up with those two dams that the the dams will be swapped around before they're printed on the blue card and corrected for you so you have that safety net so you just for any of these things whether it's sire sire breed dam any of those things record the information um to the best of your ability the best of your knowledge but with the knowledge then in the background you have that safety net of the genotype then to fix those errors before they get printed onto a blue card perfect um must the so this is just one around uh, if a cow is being culled at the end of the year, does she need to be done? Um, so look, you won't be charged either way. So what I would say to you is if she's in the milking herd and she's in amongst all the other cows you're doing and you have the tag there for, you know, there's no real, you know, just rather than trying to separate them out, I'd be inclined to just tag them because she won't cost you anything anyway. But if all you have left at the end of the year to send into the lab is cull cows that are absolutely definitely not going to be um, um, breeding anymore in your herd, then you know that that'll be okay we won't expect you to to round them up separately but my, my advice would be if they're in amongst everything else uh, it's not costing you anything it'll only slow you down trying to separate them out just tag them up and send them send away the samples with everything else perfect um could you say, uh, clarify again on autumn born calves this year so calves born this whole uh, yeah so so we will be going out to you with tags for your existing cows and heifers um, and stock bulls that are not genotyped. And as Garod said, it'll be in August, September time. Um, but we will be trying to, to go with one order per herd. Um, what we what we can't really do with the amount of herds involved and so on is, is be going, you know, with five tags now and another five later on and so on and so forth. So whatever is in your herd up to the point whatever's in your herd that's for breeding and isn't gene typed up to the point when we issue the tags in all August, September will be captured and, and, and you're done. And then any calves born after that, unfortunately, 
you know, they'll be at your own cost. Now they're young, they're young, so you won't have to necessarily do them in the autumn period. You can wait till next year and see where you're at because they won't be breeding for a couple of years, but they'll be done under, they'll be, uh, they'll have to be done under your own cost if they're going to be kept for breeding in the long term. Perfect. Uh, how will tag progress be tracked and will we need to register postage? Um, you can register postage if you want to, in terms of your own peace of mind and making sure the samples have got to the lab, but you don't, you won't be required to register postage. So register postage is more expensive, so you'll be bringing an extra cost onto yourself if you do that. Uh, in terms of the tags, you know, we have a tracking system up on, on the, uh, our service at the moment and we're working on improving that. So you will you will be possible to keep track of where the sample is at within the lab then. So once once we have sight of it, once it's received in the lab, you'll be able to track it through and see, you know, that it's received in the lab and then that the results are back. Um, at that point and so on. So we can't we've no way we have no way of tracking the post itself. And, you know, you can track it yourself if you decide to pay for uh, track postage, but we can track it for you and show you where it's at then once it hits the lab right the way through the, the lab process. Perfect. Um, how much will Gino cell sample cost? So we can't actually answer that at the moment. There's a number of different factors that have to be taken into consideration. So uh, the service will be most likely rolled out by the milk recording organization. So they'll have to set their own fees. It also depends on, on the, the volumes of samples. So what kind of um, best price can be got from the lab for sampling? You would depend on the volumes of samples and, and so on. So I really can't comment on that at the moment, but you know, it, it's likely to be somewhere in the, in the normal territory of it's a genotype sample effectively so you know somewhere at the moment the cost of genotype on calves for example you know it's 50 euros for dairy males outside this program right the way down to different discounts so somewhere in that territory is probably the most likely but we can't say for definite perfect after the geno sample result is received back does the farmer have to go back into his ag food and confirm anything or will the blue card be issued automatically no, so only one visit is needed to your farm software or your or ag food. So you make the initial submission of the record as as I said to the best of your knowledge, and then the the correction based on the DNA will, ha will happen automatically in the background uh, by AM. So there's no there's no need for you to go back in. So it'll be assumed that the DNA is correct. And if there is any any particular issue with what we've predicted from the DNA, it'll be it should be a simple enough process to rectify. You'll call us and we'll get that rectified in a fresh blue card out if needed as quick as possible. Perfect. Uh, when will when will we get EBIs for Frisian males? Um. So for male calves, um, for male calves born in the spring, it'll follow the the same process we have at the moment. So once the calf is registered. Um, it'll have already have a genotype uh, sample in in the database because we've used that to confirm its parentage and it'll flow then into the weekly uh, genomic eval process. So sometime in the following week after it's um, a week to a week and a half from the time it's been registered, it should get a genomic evaluation. Perfect. Um, how far back will errors be corrected? So there's sire and dam, yes, but if there was an error with a grand dam, would that be detected in the genotype sample? So uh, the way parentage works with genotypes, uh, it, it involves a direct comparison with the sample of the parent and the sample of the animal that whose parentage you're checking. So it doesn't actually work to go back another generation. It, it, you know, it, it's 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 a direct comparison between the two animals is what you're doing so the plan for the parentage all of the parentage of your calves will be done so so the, the calves will be checked against their dams but the dams and heifers that you're sending in uh, this year we're not going to be checking the parentage on on uh, particularly the dams on those because even if we can identify an error we, we most likely won't have a sample of the correct dam to give you so it, it's you know it probably would cause more problems than it would would um solve basically you know um uh so so what we're effectively doing with with genotyping your existing herd is creating a clean slate these are the this is the dna profile of your existing herd and then everything will be matched and um, perfectly to them to you know to verify to them uh, from here on out from here on out so that's that's the, that's the plan 
Um, what if a farmer purchased an animal that was genomic tested through this program by another farmer? Does the animal have to be retested? No. So whether I, I see a similar question there and I try to catch a couple of questions there with this answer. So if you buy in animals into your herd from somewhere else and they've been done already or you're selling animals to somebody else and you've done them, they don't need to be done again. So any, and, and that goes goes for um, any animals in your existing herd that we are sending tags for. If you've been genotyping for whatever reason through the BDGP or the SCEP or through, you, you know, if you're a beef herd or just, you know, through this different genotype and discounts or for the AI companies, whatever the reason is, any animal that's been genotyped already doesn't need to be done again. So you won't need to, to take a second sample for any of those animals. If stock bulls are sold before tags arrive, will it cause a problem? If stock bulls are sold before tags arrive? No, not necessarily. So, I mean, the big one really is verifying the dams. Obviously, we want to verify the sires as well as much as possible. But the dams are the trickier um, the trickier errors to fix, you know, afterwards because you have to amend blue cards and, and so on. So what might happen if you had a stock bull and he's not genotyped and he's gone before we issue tags, it may mean then in, in the springtime that we can't verify the sire of those calves. We'd be able to verify the dams because you'll have all your cows done, but we may not be able to verify that bull to those calves. So look, at it, it's that's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. You only actually have to record a sire breed for, for the calf. So and then your next stop will, that comes in, we'll make sure over the course of the program, you'll make sure that he's done. So at most, it'll be only one season where that would be the, the case. Perfect. Um, how long do button tags have to stay on? Uh, button tags, I'm assuming you're referring to then the existing cows and heifers. So the purpose of the button tag is to take the tissue sample. So once you are confident that you have a valid sample, you know, that there is actually tissue up in the tag in the bottle to go away to the lab. In theory, you don't have to leave those button tags on there. They're an additional tag to the national tag. If you don't like them in there, you can you can remove them again if you if you want to, and just leave the the hole behind in the in the little some small hole behind in the ear or whatnot. They're not required for inspection or anything like that. Um. So, but it it, it might be easier for you so you know which ones you have done or you haven't. But that's your own preference. Once we get the sample out of the ear and it's and we have enough to test, that's all that's that's required from the button tags. Perfect. Um, after 2027, will genotype potentially become mandatory for all farmers? Um, so look, we can't say that for 100% definite, but given the scale of the monetary and, you know, other investment by the department and the industry into this, it's, um, it certainly looks likely and it's definitely our ambition, to, you know, that this would be phase one of maybe two or three, excuse me, two or three phases to get towards the national herd, but it's it's probably a small little bit premature to say for definite yet, but that would be where 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 the plan would be for to go with this. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, there's a couple of questions there around uh, paper registration. So a farmer who doesn't use online or technology. So yeah, this really that's one of the only um kind of caveats to this system. You would need to be at least able to log into Ag Food. Um, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be uh, signed up to a farm software or anything like that necessarily, although it will work. I see another question. Can you use Herdwatch to register calves so you can continue to use your existing farm farm ops, Herdwatch, Kingswood, Agronet, those farm software packages to register your calves or you can you'll be able to use Ag Food. But the only type that won't work is a paper registration. And again, it's just to do with the, the way that the system has to um, account for a um, a DNA sample in the background as quickly as possible. It, 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 it's effectively an electronic process. So if you're absolutely not able to register by anything other than paper, if paper is your other option, then unfortunately this this program isn't going to work for you. Perfect. Um, will the button tags qualify as an official tag, one of the two required tags in the animal's ears? No, so a button a button tag is a, is a, a, a an extra tag or what we well, it's referred to as a management tag. So um, for in terms of the actual tags in the year that the, that, that that you need for the department's requirements, it won't count for that. It's the norm. It's a normal big national the yellow flag tags or the I suppose the EID one is white now, but it's the the same tags as normal is what's needed in the in the year. 
um, for for the department's purposes. So it won't it won't do if you have some cows now that have lost a, a tag. Um, it won't do to replace that. And actually, on that point, if you have a cow that has lost her tag and she has an existing hole in her ear, that's not going to work for sampling either. Because I know it makes it easier. It's easier to put a tag into a new tag into an existing hole, but you won't catch any tissue for the DNA. So just bear that in mind as well, Lee. Don't be tempted just to put the button tag into an existing hole in the cow's ear because you know you know, you'll defeat the purpose of what you're actually trying to do there with that. Perfect. Um, if you have the wrong sire recorded, will it identify the correct sire? Yeah. So again, uh, like the idea of doing the stock bulls and and whatnot in the herd is where we can is to help us identify the correct sire where this uh, you know identify where the wrong sire is recorded and then identify what the correct sire is. So it, it it's about seventy percent of stock bulls at the moment are currently already genotyped and all AI bulls unless you go you have to go a long way piece back in time to get find an AI bull that isn't genotyped. So once the site once the correct sire is genotyped, we'll be able to find them and add them on for you but yeah perfect so look, the last question there is just around the uh, skip um so the suckler scheme is all their genotyping at the reduced cost of four euro or do they still pay full price for the skip required genotypes yeah so i think that came up a couple of times actually it came up early about the um it came up early in relation to the um as well so but um basically your your samples when you if you're in skep and um, the samples you send in for your calves in the spring will count towards your skep requirement as Garod might have mentioned and um, so you'll meet your requirements of the scheme for the skep and effectively you'll be paying the four euros then for anything above and beyond in terms of what the total cost of those it'll still be the 20 euros that that covered under the skip and what i would like to say on that front is actually so i suppose when you get your invoice for your for your skip you would you'll see a gross payment and then you see minus 20 euros for each of the um for each of the animals that you do for your, the skip that 20 euros if you weren't to genotype the animal that 20 euros wouldn't wouldn't be coming to you in your payment it, it, they're, they're included in your invoice so that you can claim VAT back. But the 20 euros for the genotype in those animals was never w would never go to you as a farmer. So you're not actually paying 20 euros, if that makes sense. So while you, you were saying it's costing six for these guys, whereas the skep guys are being charged 20, you're not actually. Do you know what I mean? It, it, you're, you, that, that money was never yours if you get if you get what i'm trying to say it was never coming it never actually coming to you you wouldn't be 20 euros off if you didn't do the the genotyping in fact maybe 13 or 14 euros of the other money that you get is to cover the labor of genotyping so if you didn't do the genotyping in the skip not only would you not be 20 euros better off you'd be 14 euros worse off so effectively this the skip genotyping is free um, and the four or the six euros, if you to count the extra cost of the tag in the postage, is what the cost is for this. Um, so that's the way it should be looked at, rather than that you're getting a worse deal. And actually, the skip herds have a better deal than than the animals being done through this program. Margin, this is still a good deal, but just marginally better. Perfect. Um, my replacements are on an out farm. Can I tag them when they come in in November? So we can um, we can certainly get if they're in and out farm and you've told us that num the tag number, we can certainly still include them in the order for genotypes for your herd. But we would ask that you still try and get them sampled as soon as possible in the existing herd arranged with the on the out farm or arrange something if, you, if at all possible, uh, because if we leave it till November, Basically, you know, we're, we're coming into the Christmas period then and trying to get those samples done beforehand uh, before before the end of the year. It will be very, very tricky. So so leave them to the to answer, answer your question quickly, leave them to November. No, we will do them for you, but you can't. You, we would ask you not to leave them all the way until November. Perfect. Uh, dead calves and young bull calves, must they be sampled as part of the programme? Yeah, so we had a question there about must we do, why do we need to do the bull calves for sale? Must we do the bull calves? So there's two reasons why the bull calves need to be done and, and, and it ties in with the dead calves as well in, to an extent. Um, if you have two calves mixed up in terms of their dam, if you were to only sample the female calf or the live calf in, in that particular example, 
you know, you have your other calf is already registered and the blue card is printed, the passport is printed before you discover that you have the two dams mixed up. And now you have a DVO form maybe to do to fit to, 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 to change that dam so that you can register your heifer. Um, so it's much uh, easier and cleaner to do every animal. But uh, I suppose another part of it is like part of the benefit of this program, as well as the dairy, uh, um, the dairy or the breeding herds getting the value for the animals they're keeping for breeding. Uh, part of the reason the the, the um, industry is funding this in the department is the benefit for those guys who are who are rearing the animals and 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 want to be able to see those CBVs uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and the fact that there's a benefit to people outside of your herd is why there is a shared funding model. So you're paying roughly six euros all in for your part of the, the programme, but there's six euros then coming from the department and six euros coming from the industry. And the fact that those that other 12 euros is being covered by people other than you is, is, is to reflect the fact that it's people other than you that get the benefit from those from some of those genotypes it's like the male calves and that so i suppose that's that's the reason for that and look with uh, with most herds if you tie it up you're still financially paying less uh, at four euros for your full herd than you would for just doing your females at maybe 22 which is the full cost so you're still you're still onto onto a, onto a winner financially perfect um can i order tissue tags for young breeding bulls and will they be paid for in the scheme Young breeding bulls, so young breeding bulls, as I mentioned already, when you say young breeding bulls, if these are bulls that are will be used for breeding for siring calves in your own herd, then we will uh, try our best to pick all of those up. If they're breeding bulls that you're breeding yourself to sell to somebody else for breeding, then we won't be picking them up. But look, I would argue on those front, if you're selling a breeding animal, there's uh, more than enough reward in in spending the twenty two euros on the genotype for for those animals anyway. For you know, um, it's a kind of a no brainer to get those genotyped yourselves anyway. But no, we won't we won't be able to stretch to all of the all of the breeding bulls that you're selling to other other people's herd. Now look, from next year you'll be doing all the calves at birth for four. So any of the breeding bulls that are born in your herd next year that you'll be selling will be done. But anything that's in your herd at the moment, you'd have to order yourself. Perfect. Um, do double tissue tags include an electronic tag or are three tags required? Yeah, so um, they, they do is the short answer. Uh, the two main tag suppliers have a, have a com combined. So the one set of tags that you put into the calves here will cover you from the EID component. It'll leave you a BVD sample for that requirement and it'll also leave you a, a DNA um, sample bottle. So it meets all, the, all of those requirements. So just to clarify, if someone's using Herdwatch or a farm software package, they or ag food, they just register the calf as normal on their end, and the DNA correction of dam sire will occur without any intervention by the farmer. Yes, that's very neat summary. I can't put it any neater than that. So that's exactly how it will happen. That uh, that uh, applies to not just the hard watch, but also to the other farm software packages, um, Agrinet and um, Kingswoods. Farm ox and those, and also that's also the way it'll work with the ag food website as well. Perfect. Uh, is 18 days the max you expect for a blue card to be returned after a farmer post samples? So, I mean, the max, the max is very much down to you. So, I mean, if you, if you, um, <clears throat> If you didn't put, if you wait till the calf is 14 days of age or, or 16 days of age or 17 days of age before you tag and, and sample it, you know, obviously the calf is going to be older than 18 days by the time the blue card is, is going to arrive because it will still take four or five days in, in the in the lab. Um, so look, uh, no, look, like, can I can I say, promise you that there'll never, ever be any delays ever. Of course, there's this, you know, you can have issues with post and, and whatnot but um but no it, it look at it should if if you if you're tagging your calves um regularly tagging them nice and young sending your tags away uh, regularly and you know we don't don't run into any issues with with post and delays or, or or anything like that there should be should be very few animals above uh, above um above uh, 18 days. We will also have the ability, should something catastrophic go wrong with a sample and there's a, there is a delay, we will have a, a, a effectively at an animal level a manual override 
you know, so if the animal is 18, 20 days of age, samples gone missing, it's all gone to pot for that particular animal, you know, you can give us a call and we can, we will have the ability to to facilitate you to push that registration, you know, or to for that registration to go through without to the without the DNA. And uh, if if we if it's really needed, you know, so that that procedure would be there in 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 an in emergency, I suppose, so that the calves don't hang around for indefinitely. Um, but yeah, they should they should within your own control, they should be back within eighteen days. Perfect. And uh, one more: uh, Will the genotype tell solids accurately of the Cohen calf? So gene and um, genomic evaluations do add reliability into the EBI in terms of the solid, any of the any of the traits in the EBI, whether it's fertility or maintenance or calving or the milk subindex, the the fat and the fat and the protein and that. So it will add reliability. I mean, tell solids accurately. Then is I suppose a matter of interpretation. You know, it'll be more. It, it'll certainly predict the ability of the cow to produce solids more accurately than um than the EBI without the genomics, it, it will increase the, uh, we, we, I assume that's what I assume, I, I'm, I'm interpreting that question that way. Really, yeah. Perfect, that's all the questions, Mark, for you. Yeah, and we just, we just have a look at, there's a Q&A and the comments, so we'll just have a look in the Q&A chat there as well, just in case there's any. Yeah, so we have a question there. Why do we record the, the, the dam when registering a calf if the DNA will reveal the result? So look, like a bit like your BVD sample, you will have um, a few empties over the course of the year and where the, the, the tide pushes through the year and doesn't catch enough DNA. And sometimes then when we go to extract the DNA from the sample in the lab, um, we can, you know, we, we don't get quite a, quite enough of a clear clarity or quality of the DNA sample to get a, a clear result that we can use. So a bit like the BBD, there will be maybe a two or two and a half percent of cases we will have to maybe do a retest. Um, and so what we say is that, you know, this onus is still on you to keep track of your calving as best as you can. And the DNA then is a safety net to catch errors but that you're not completely dependent on it so that at least if something needs to go wrong with the sample, you have, uh, as to the best of your knowledge, uh, uh, an idea of what the correct dam is. So that's to answer your question there, John, so why you need to record the dam. Um, and look at that, that, that keeping of accurate records is actually a, a cross-compliance um, requirement with the department and they're not likely to budge on that. Do you need a different tagger for these tags? Um, so um, the best person, the best people really to 100% confirm that with is whoever your tag supplier is. So if you ask them, you know, when you're ordering, they'll be able to confirm that for definite. But in theory, the, it, it's a tissue, it's a tissue bottle. Do you know what I mean? So the what the tagger you're using for the uh, for the BVD or it shouldn't theory work. Now I do know with Mulnahan, I think the EID one is a little bit fatter, so you might just have to make some little adjustment to your tagger, but. In theory, the same tigers as you've been operating with at the moment should work, but your your tag supplier will be able to confirm that with you a hundred percent. Do all we... beef calves have to be done, or just dairy calves? Yeah, so every calf. So once we get to twenty twenty four, and you're doing the calves apart, it's every calf, regardless of sex, breed, dead or alive, everything is done. Yeah, all all the all the calves. Yeah. Uh, what are the possibilities of a retest running over 42 days? Um, a retest, so again, again, in, in theory, the retest, uh, once it hits the lab, should only take about five days. <clears throat> so um, we, you know, if you go and get your retest on your calf, if you get your retest kit straight away and take the sample and get it straight back into us, you should have loads of time to get a, re, um, a second result within your 42 days but as i said to you we do have we do have that in an, an absolute emergency you can call us and we will have the the ability as an override to allow the registration to be released without a dna result so if if your retest was for some reason taking longer than usual you contact us and, and we should be able to help you avoid that, that, that 42 day um, concern perfect and i have one more here can button tags be eid Dan button ties with EID. So 
Um, for the purposes of what we are doing, the answer is no. As far as I'm aware, none of the tag suppliers have a button tag that doubles with an EID. So if you remember, each of these is a different mold, a different, slightly different product, you know. So they have developed an EID tag for the, the proper flag tag for the Mac, then the main tag in the calf's ear that also takes tissue. But there hasn't really been a demand that I'm aware of for a button tag that's also EID. So I, I, I did, we did have this query up at the IHFA open day. Somebody was uh, hoping to put EID tags in their own accounts and get the sample from it as well to save themselves putting two buttons in. But unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, there isn't such a product out there that does both, I'm afraid. Perfect. And one more here. If the dam and sire are both genotyped, does the genotyping of the calf dramatically improve the reliability of the calf's EBI or is the difference only minimal? So it will still uh, have a, a fairly significant increase in the reliability of the calf. So while the dam and, and sire being genotyped obviously will help the reliability of their EBI, which will mean that the, that'll mean the base level uh, from a parental average point of view of the calf is higher. You're starting from a higher foundation, but it's that still doesn't tell you exactly what mix of the, the parents' genes, and there's billions of different mixes they could in theory get. So the the, the, par the parents being genotype doesn't tell us the mix of genes that the calf has got. The only thing that tells us that is the genotype of the calf itself. So you might, and you, the fact that your both parents are genotyped will mean that, you know, you're you're coming you're going to get into a higher reliability, but the the effect of the genotype will be much the same. So, you know, a calf by two ungenotype parents might have a reliability of twenty percent, for example, or twenty five percent. The calf from uh, the calf from a uh, genotype parents might be thirty percent to start with, but in both cases the the rise the rise in 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 reliability would be much the same. So that first calf would maybe rise to forty five or fifty percent, whereas the the second calf might rise to fifty five percent. If you if you understand what I mean. Perfect. Um, that's all the questions we have for you, I'd say. Yeah, so I think we've covered the uh, the autumn barn calves come up a couple of times just to reiterate. Unfortunately, we can do everything in the herd up to a point. Um, but if you happen to have a few calves born after we issue tags in the autumn or you buy in replacements next year, the honest will be on you to pick those up and you get those for most likely 18 euros. That being said, maybe there'll be more fun to come online next year and we'll be able to pick them up next year. We can't say. And um, so if you want to hold off on those till next year, that's fine. And um, but then, yeah, they're the only ones effectively that you would have to do yourself. Perfect. I think that's it, is it? enough yeah I, th I think i think so i think we've been most have been covered look if you have any questions that we didn't cover or you know that we missed out on just give us a call and uh we'll we'll do our best to get, get give you the give you the answer and uh look we hope to have you all in the program next year it's a super opportunity as somebody pointed out and we are on the, the steps to hopefully this being the, the norm nationally the national standard um, and so, you know, it's a great opportunity to get in at the start with a serious value for money in terms of getting your existing herd genotype for free and your calves at four euros. So we look forward to having you all in and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll be uh, in a position there to run too soon and let you know how the applications can accept it. Fantastic. I think that's a wrap. Thanks very much to everyone who's joined. And if you have any further questions, right, and just give us a shout.